Hi everyone and welcome to part one of Gravant uh, River. So this is part one of a three-part series that um, I will be putting part one on YouTube as well as Uscreen and I will be putting part two and three on Uscreen only. So with you YouTubers that are looking this for this, come on over to Uscreen and it's a paid platform. It's very reasonable, $9.99 a month and um, you can start and stop anytime. So that's the mechanics of where to find all this stuff. I think part one is block in. So I have drew out shapes and then I filled in those shapes with color value. I did that step by step. I showed you my mixtures and then I had also a camera behind my shoulder to show you what I was painting, how I did it, and I also describe what I was doing when I was doing it, as well as the mixtures. So the important thing is get outside and paint. Keep painting. Paint with your friends. Get in an art group. And um, don't be intimidated by a white canvas. Get critiques. That's important also. Okay, I won't do any more preaching. Let's get over to part one of Gravant River. Okay, thanks for coming by. Good morning and welcome to part one of a three-part series titled uh, Gravant River. Um, the American spelling or pronunciation would probably be Gros Venture, but uh, the French is uh, Gravant. This is a river over by uh, Teton National Park and it's over by the campground, Gravant Campground. And uh, what a pretty spot. So. Um, this is uh, evening because I, I just know this spot. And um, so we have these long shadows. So we have uh, shadows and light and this uh, nice uh, abstract design of this river coming down here. I think some potential problems might be the um, area where uh, we have this big uh, uh, shoal here. Um, with uh, nothing in it. So I think in this area on the lower left I'm going to put uh, maybe a, a channel of water or something like that coming through there. Just to break that up. Other than that I think it's a pretty nice uh, reference. So uh, I'm going to be using my uh, Ultra Blue, my Alizarin. Um, this I think is actually uh, um, uh, crimson Ro uh, crimson uh, Lake, and this is uh, Lemon Yellow, Naples Yellow, uh, Cold Gray, I have um, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Viridian, and Titanium White in my lower right. My tools, I looks like I have a 10, uh, looks like a 6 or a 7, um, and uh, looks like a little number 2 here flat. So I'm going to start with my little guy to just draw out some shapes. And uh, I don't have a palette knife. Where did it go? I need a palette knife. Sorry folks, one of the problems that happens when you do these things, that is. Okay, so let's start with a... Let's start with a worm. So we're going to start with a raw sienna and white. If you have yellow ochre that'll work too. And I kind of see that up here there's Kind of the start of everything. There's trees and, and stuff like that up here, but and then I think there's a. Let me see if I can get this river thing going here. This is the top of the river, Rouvant. And then there's an island here. Let me see if I can. This might be a little flatter than this. And if you don't like a line, just pick it up. 
And now I have a kind of a shore over here. And then we have this great big island over here, which basically goes like this. And then over here it goes something like that. And then we have this big island over here. Or And then this one, it's like we have a small island here. And I'll break this one up here with I made that one up to just try to fill in that break that big area up there. And to make it a little bit more sexy, I'll put a little bit more curve in here. And that also helps to take care of this. And I think right here we actually have some shoreline here. All right, let's figure out where the trees are going to be, which are basically over in here. I think I've got some mountains over here. And I'll put those in back up in here. Now I'm going to add some ultra blue to this uh, mixture. And let's see, we have some. Let me get myself oriented. I'm going to have I think there's some lighter stuff on the shore, and then there's trees. I think in this area, kind of go up and. And there's a dip and then bigger trees up in here. And then over here we have bushes. So this is bushes. And my brain is trying to say, what are these shapes? I don't want to try trick my brain and say, draw a tree. I'm just doing kind of where these shapes are going to be. And these bigger guys here, and I think that's our drawing. All right, that'll work for me. And let me do a little refinement here. I think actually we have a here, a tree, a mountain, and this kind of comes down this way. And this is actually a little higher, I think. Okay, these are mountains back in here. Well, let's see what we can work with here. I'm going to see what I've got. Oh, kind of a nice cold gray. So let's do a, some ultra blue some raw sienna, some white, and we're coming up with kind of a cold gray look. Let's see if that would be dark enough down here. I think I need more ultra blue in here. So I'm what my theory is on all this, if you have a color, can you make something else out of it uh, to uh, work your painting? I'm going to get my number 10 out. And I'm just going to fill in some big, big dark areas. Excuse me, I have to go hunting for my waste paper baskets because I have students in studio. They use them and move them, but they do empty them, that's nice. All right, so I'm going to get this, both sides of this guy loaded up, and I'm going to... Well, that's a pretty color. 
Again, we're just putting in this thin and we're going to work it out later as to may or may not be our final color. I've got to get this up so I can get the bottom done. There we go. And I think we have some islands over here I made. My whole thing I'm trying to do here in this part one is get a pretty good feeling of where these value colors are going to be. And since I'm going to work on top of it, I don't have a, don't need a whole bunch of paint right now. I just want to get that down. And we have this gray green here. Let's throw some yellow in it and see what happens. Let's do a yellow, raw sienna. And so it's basically on top of that blue-gray I put some raw sienna and uh, lemon yellow. And I might be able to get away with some of this. This is outside Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Revolt. So on top of my blue, I mixed a lemon yellow and a raw sienna. And it's, I think it's working out pretty good. I'm going to add uh, some more Naples to this. Because I want to get some lighter stuff down below, which would be more Naples, a little bit more white, more Naples. And I'm trying to get this it's like a lighter green or something underneath here. And then I also see it right in here. Okay, here we go. And I see this in the island, part of the island, not all of the island. There's a lot of shore in the island, too. And then I see a darker green on this side. So I just went back in. I had a little bit more of that blue-gray on the side, so I just went back in there and put some of it in there. Back to the yellow green, and I'll put some over in here. Okay. Now we have water that's dark and water that's showing the reflection of the light that's shining on from it, that's coming in from the left. And let me see, I'm going to go to a Number six, rosemary. Filbert. Let's see, that's... We're going to have to move our green out of here. And it's very thin now. I've used up most of it. Just taking up a lot of space on my palette. 
and I want to get into the next thing, major thing, which would be water. So, let us see here. Let's go with the dark stuff first. So let's go with some gray and viridian. And we'll put some blue in there too, but I want to lighten it up a little bit. Now with my white, I might be put too much in there. Too much blue too. Back to gray. Back to white. And just a touch of viridian. And we're going to have to make a light side to that. So let's go with some white. Oh, I lost my image. There it is. The U screeners are seeing an overlay picture. I have the same picture, but it's on my screen. And I'm going to have to make that even lighter, I think. Just get some ultra and some white. See what that does. Oh boy, I overdid it. Here we go. That might do better for us for the light. So I have ultra and white, and over here I have ultra gray, a little bit of iridium and titanium. And over here on the left, lower left, I just added more white. Let me try this dark out, see how it works. There's a bunch of darks in here. I hope I made enough product. right through here and I'll put some in here And I'm just going to make this dark down here. I know there's ripples and so forth, but that's going to be an overlay. And just a little bit of turp to this, get some run out of it. channel. When I squint down at the reference, in this area you can't tell much difference between water and island. But over here with that overlay, you can tell a difference because of those ripples. Let me get some more dark up in here. All right, let's go over to our light and put that in. I'm going to... I'm actually using a mixture between the ultra blue and white and that white and lighter color of the ultra blue, gray and alizarin, I'm sorry, viridian. And let me see if I can get some, some of this overlay stuff. Good. 
I can have dark up in through here though. A lot going on down there in those ripples. All right, now we need some some warmer color. Let's pick all this up, throw it together, and maybe make some background colors with those mountains. But let's get some warms in these uh, shorelines here. Let's see if I can get a better brush. Then it's going to start to flare out. I've got this uh, number four flat. Let me see if I can use that for making some shoreline here. So let's go Naples and white. Naples and a touch of raw sienna, raw sienna. And I'm going to put a touch of Crimson Lake in here. All right, that looks pretty. I just glanced at the clock. I think we're doing okay. Just trying to get the big areas in with some sort of value color. Value color means exactly what I it denotes its color and value. And I think we see some of these worms up in here too in the trees in a few places, but we can worry about that later. Okay. Let me Fill in some of these areas that are a little and I'll put some up in here too. Oh, I forgot there's some right here. I'm gonna put gray in it. What was I thinking? Let's move this warm color out of the way. Let's go back to our kind of cool color here. Grays and blues and a little bit of iridium. Cleaning out the brush, I'm really drying it out good. And I'm gonna add a little ultra blue to it. And a little of our gray, I mean of our warm color. And some white. And I think we're going to have some kind of a lighter gray up in here. Warm gray. And then as I go back, I'm going to add a little bit more blue and lighten that up. And that's going to be right here. And then I'm going to add in some warmer color. So I'm going to go to Naples. Should put some of that in here too. I made this too gray over here. And there we go.
Okay, man, we almost have this canvas covered. Alright, I need some sky color. It looks like it's a crystal clear day. If I want to put in some clouds, I can do so later, but let's just get a, a cerulean and a white mixture for the... I'm, yeah, cerulean and white. It's really, oh boy, I'm gonna get some fresh white out there. Mm. I sure mucked up the original stuff. Contaminated, what I mean, is by mucking. So, I've got some cerulean and some titanium white. And I better clean that brush a little bit better. And make some more of this. And just get a sky color in here. And I might make it with the amount of product I have. Maybe. And I'm a little thin. But maybe if I scribble some, I can pick some up. Make a better edge, which I didn't do a very good job at. And that would be our block-in. Yeah, this um, 11 by 18 I'm working on is... A little bit more canvas than I normally do for a 30 minute section. But nonetheless, we got it done. What I want to do um, when I look at this today is figure out where I need to go and, and um, get balance. I can tell right now my darks down on the lower section are not dark enough, and I'll need to be doing more of that. Picking up a lot of excess paint because I know I'm going to be working over the top of it. I'm just picking it up to. But if this gives us some good groundwork to, to work on here, I'm just smashing it in right here. See, I'm smashing it in. Sometimes I pick it up too. And then smash it back down. You can also use a squeegee, uh, which CW Monday, I think, introduced to us a few years back. You know, just keep it thin. All right. That's it for part one. And this is officially called block-in. What we did was to draw some lines as to where our shapes were. And then with that, we filled in those shapes with value color. So that's part one. You screeners, thank you so much for coming by. And I also know that I put part one on um, uh, YouTube. So YouTube's thanks for coming by. But part two and three will always be on Uscreen. Actually, part one, two, and three will always be on Uscreen. And with that, we'll say see you in part two.